Welcome back to Black Girl Stuff. Mr. All Best on Himself, culinary innovator, real estate investor, and event curator Larry Morrow is joining us tonight in the BGS house. How you doing today, Larry? I'm doing good. Yes, thank, thank you for, for being me. here. Let's jump right in, because I know that's what you did here. <laughs> <Right. laughs> right? yeah. So at age 20, you began building your company, and that was from the ground up to connecting with celebrities like Drake, Meek Mill, mm. Mary J. Blige. The list literally goes on. I want to know, how are you able to establish these big connections? I started off producing events at an early age, and um, I was more so focused on building relationships versus making the money. Okay. Um, and that just come from me doing an event, bringing someone to New Orleans, showing them a great time. And when they left, it was like, yo, out of every, it was Dre Michelle. She was like, yo, out of every city we went to, you know, you being the youngest person we dealt with, you took care of us better than, you know, everybody in all the cities you went to. So um, I follow that same regimen of just bringing people to New Orleans, showing, showing them that Southern hospitality, and it helped me build a brand. So uh, for the past 12 years, you know, I'm 32 now, I've been focusing on building those relationships and um, not just the, the money aspect. So um, when I did Drake uh, one year, 2016, I lost like 25,000 on that event, mm. but I knew I was gonna lose. Mm. But I was more so concerned with just build, establishing that relationship you know, being from New Orleans is like a seedless market. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't have those opportunities to connect with different people like that unless you really are part of what's going on. So um, those investments helped me really build my brand. Nice. So how did the relationships actually happen, though? Because a lot of people might have the ideas, right? Let's mm -hmm. throw the events, let's do the things with the people, but it's the people part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, right. did you, how were you able to get so that? So I started using a booking agent at 20 years old to, mm -hmm. to book these different, like Drea, I used a booking agent. Nice. I used booking agents for the past, you know, I mean, for the first, you know, three years. Yeah. But as I started to develop these relationships and uh, once you know a few people, you know, you pretty much know everybody because right. I can pick up, pick up the phone and call Kenny Burns or call Cannon Jasper. Get connected. And, and they connect me with, with whomever. So um, once I started to establish my brand and my reputation, that's when, you know, everybody just really started to know me for what I was doing, producing events. Right. Because I was like, in one month, I had Drake, Diddy, and that's Lil Wayne. Crazy. That's and a trifecta right <laughs> <laughs> That's so, like some other stuff. Yeah, and, and, and um, you know, I was just willing to take those risks to build those relationships, but also in hopes of making money as well. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we touch back on the fact that you lost money with Drake, and how did that happen? Because you said you lost money, but we don't know how you lost the money. So I lost it because, so I charged to get into the event. So for that particular event, I was mm. deep, I, I was so deep in, and, um, I just, you know, I just probably wasn't charging enough. Um, didn't have enough people. Of course, I sold out the venue, but at that point in my in my event promotion career, I didn't really understand the numbers like I do now. Mm. So it really was me just jumping off the cliff and just figuring it out. Yeah. Um, and I ended up losing, but um, I think if I was to do it now, I wouldn't lose. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I, I was willing to take that risk. And, yeah. and, and it worked out because uh, that happened in 2016. 2018, I opened up Morrow's. And Drake, you know, he ended up coming to Morrow's after three months of it being open. Wow. It went viral. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, that helped, you know, get us to a great start. Yeah. yeah. That's a full circle moment. For full sure. circle moment. We That's in those relationships. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. But yeah. what was the biggest loss that you've, you've taken? Uh, I would say one time for an event, I committed to a guarantee for All-Star Weekend. I think I didn't reach it. It was like a hundred and something thousand mm. I owed. Mm. And I wouldn't pay it. Whew. And, and, and let me tell you, like, somebody told me the other day, they was like, because you paid that, and this was the casino. Yeah. Mm. They said, give him any date he want. Wow. Right? You because, see? so that's why I started, like, to do my big events with Drake and Diddy. Yeah. And I lost a lot of money. A lot of people, I never talked about this, but I lost so much money, but I wrote that check the next day, and, and, mm. and it made them realize, like, he really bought his business. A man so, of honor. Any date that he want, give it to him. That's Done. You know, so, mm, yes. I would never put the, the money before the relationship, and I think that allowed me to make a lot of money in such an early age. Well, let's talk about the food, okay? Because <laughs> New Orleans is known for its food culture. You've obviously mastered the secret sauce by having four restaurant locations in very prime locations in New Orleans. got three new locations yeah. on the Yeah, order. well, tell us, what are some of the politics in acquiring these locations, you know, breaking into the food industry, especially, again, at some of these prime places that a lot of people would want to be in? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's relationships, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but also just, you know, a lot of the spots that I acquired, you know, I've been stalking them for two years, you know? So I would literally call one spot every day, call the realtor, like, yo, y'all want to sell yet? Y'all want to sell yet? Just understanding the market and studying it and just watching these locations on the market and see, seeing some of them not doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, they might jump into a restaurant and um, 
do a full development, but I look for second generation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Second generation because I won't have to spend this much money. I can do more. I won't have to, you know, do plumbing and AC and electrical. Mm -hmm. I might have to do small stuff, but, um, you know, so that's pretty much my game plan when it pertains to, like, just acquiring new locations, just, mm -hmm. just looking at a spot. It may be a year or two years before I get it. So second generation, and what else do you really look at when you're saying location? I want prime real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. at one point I wanted the cheap rent, but yeah. I'm willing to pay the, the whatever it costs okay. if, if it's a good nice. location. Okay. Yep. I mean, you also I think what's really cool about this restaurant and the restaurant group, honestly, that you're building is that Moral it's with your yeah, yeah, you know, it's with your your family. Yes. You know, you have your mom, your just so many women that's in your life that is a prime, part of a my, part my of the core this foundation is made up of majority women. As I, I mean, yeah. I think, I think, yeah. I think <laughs> because you're talking about mentorship and you're talking about advice, and mm -hmm. oftentimes people talk about black men needing black male role models, and right. I, I agree with that. But I think you've been able to showcase that there's it's almost equal success if mm -hmm. you have women around you that really take that that interest in you and cultivate that. So how are you able to tap into the women in your life in order to achieve success? So I grew up in a household full of women: my mom, mm -hmm. my grandmother, my si my big sister. Um, my father wasn't there, mm -hmm. so. I always, you know, I was around, you know, my sister was my best friend at an early age. It was natural for me to, when, when building a team, it wasn't like I was like, oh, let me find women. women. It mm -hmm. was just a natural thing. Yeah. And, and I'm happy that it's happened the way it is because yes. I don't think my company would be growing the way it was growing if I didn't have strong women in my life. Nice. Um, I'm thankful. Yes, <laughs> we love that for To be you. honest, a lot of black restaurant owners and, you know, hospitality group owners in general um, get dogged out for having potential subpar services or being compared to a very just unequal standard around pricing of some of their products, et cetera. How do you avoid these critiques? Um, I mean, I think you know, it's, it's unavoidable. You know, mm -hmm. um, we deal with it. And um, one thing I've, I've learned, and in the beginning, it, it I used to look at the Yelp reviews mm -hmm. and it used to bother me, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just realized that I can't fix every problem. I try to just, you know, I talk to my staff every time I see something, try to correct it internally. But, you know, one thing I had to realize was that, you know, everybody won't like your product. Mm -hmm. um, I think for the most part, majority of people that we, you know, our customers love it. But, you know, we just try to get better every day. So we're not just sitting stagnant. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do to get better. I pay attention to comments, reviews, DMs, and everything. And, like, somebody stopped me in a restaurant yesterday. They told me that, uh, they told me a few things. A friend of mine yeah. told me a few things that he pointed out. I took some notes. I shot it in a group. Mm. I told him, I said, get on it. You know, Love so, that. you know, I just think it's just getting ahead of it and, and just being receptive to, to, to the advice, yeah. right? Because, um, you know, you want to, you aim to please the customers, yeah. right? And we're in hospitality, so you want to make sure that you're being hospitable, um, you know, and just overall, just giving them a great experience. Right. Do you think that black restaurant owners, though, are set to an unfair standard? I... Definitely think so, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, it's oftentimes where if anything, and the fact that I'm the face of my business, right? Yeah. You know, if anything goes wrong, they take it to social media, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, you can go up in Houston's or you can go up in one of these other <laughs> establishments. I don't see it on social media. Yeah. I don't see nobody, mm -hmm. you know, doing that. But the fact that, you know, it's become like a cool thing whenever, you know, you talk about something to get retweets, mm -hmm. to get engagement, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Because I've seen people engage and, and mention my business, my name, and may have, you know, 500 followers, but they get engagement 10,000, 10, yeah. you know, yeah. like. Yeah. So it's just crazy how people feed into the negative, yeah. and what I do is I, I just don't, you know, I just keep moving. And if I do see something pertaining to the restaurant that I feel like, okay, I'll consider it and I'll send it to my team. Like, yeah. I'm never dodging any issues. I want to make sure that we're performing at the best capacity we can. Yeah, so that means we address and we redirect, okay? So Larry Murrow, thank you so much for joining us.